Matt in St. Helens, England. Dear Shane, I was wondering if you know anyone that got caught in the steroids court case against Vince in the 80s or in the 90s. And what crazy stories did you hear from fellow wrestlers? And do you think the way smaller and cl- uh, clear wrestlers, I imagine clean, got a bigger push than they deserved? I don't quite know what he's asking there. But uh, do you know any of the wrestlers who were caught uh, in the st- uh, with the steroid testing in the WWF in the early 90s and anyone who testified for or against Vince in court? Uh, yeah, I probably knew all of them. I, 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 off the top of my head, I can't recall. I, I remember Hogan being tied to it. Um, but the, uh, uh, the steroids are still being used in our business. Uh, and uh, you know, as, uh, I'm a firm believer that you, as an adult, are responsible for you. Um, now, it doesn't mean you can go out and do whatever you want. You can't rob a bank. You can't murder somebody, rape somebody, that, that sort of thing. Uh, but when it comes to stuff like that, you know, it, it, that should really be the individuals and their doctors. Uh, uh, in my case, my body uh, didn't produce testosterone. So without it, you know, I wouldn't be able to grow facial hair and whatever else. So I am prescribed a very small dosage of, of testosterone uh, because of that. And you know, they, very low testosterone can lead to several other health issues that are far more dangerous than 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 using the, the tiny amount that I do. Uh, but with uh, with the steroids and the steroid trial, uh, this was going to be an almost impossibility to be able to convict Vince on because we talked before about the, the layers that he puts between himself and everybody. Uh, Vince, a man, is never going to walk into a room and say, James, I, I love your pal, I love your gimmick, I need to start some steroids to get bigger. He's never going to be done that way. It's going to be done in other ways like, oh, James, look at the some size. You look great. You know, it, it's fantastic. Keep it up. Uh, and that's sort of like the shot across the bow, like, hey, idiot, get some, get some muscle on. Uh, the other part of this is it was so ubiquitous. It would be disingenuous for any wrestler and any major promotion ever to say, I was completely unaware, had no idea. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, because when I was in WWF in 1990, uh, there were, uh, understand how that dressing room is set up. It's sort of like, you know, being at, you know, like a, a major concert. Like when Kiss comes down, you're not just floating in and out of the backstage area. Uh, same thing with WWF. You're only in that backstage area if you have a pass. Uh, if you're one of the boys and, and belong there, you're working in the office. It's it's very much isolated away from from the average fan for obvious reasons. Uh, there were in Hershey, Pennsylvania, uh, there were these nurses. Nurses, the kind that you would see like in a adult magazine, mm. uh, that were coming in with brown, big brown paper bags, and. Give him this guy, give him a bad guy, give him this guy. And it's like right when I first started working with him. So I thought, oh, am I supposed to get a bag? And they never brought a bag to me. And I'm like, you know, I started wondering, like, why, why didn't I get a bag? Well, if you remember the name Dr. George Zaharian, yep. uh, he was the guy that got caught up in that file and took the brunt of it. You know, lost his practice, lost they they confiscated through Rico laws, confiscated all of his businesses. Uh he there was no way George Zaharian or his um, nurses. We're getting into that backstage area without the express knowledge of Vince McMahon and the people running that company, or they wouldn't have been there. Uh, but again, plausible deniability. I don't know if those independent contractors are in the dressing room. Uh, you know, and, and and it was a shame because there was this mindset that these are just as safe as aspirin, which they weren't. And you, know, you could argue a lot of the deaths that we've seen, the sudden heart attacks and stuff, as young as these men were, uh, most likely directly attributable to that. And, uh, but if I'm the guy sitting in the owner's ball, uh, booth and all this money's coming into this professional wrestling promotion and he, fans are talking about, do you see the size of that guy? Oh my God, look at him. He's huge. Uh, that's part of the attraction, right? You're coming. To the, these are not normal guys you see walking down the street every day or in Walmart every day. These are like superhuman looking people. Uh, as long as I can say, I didn't know it. They're independent contractor. You know, Shane Douglas is responsible for Shane Douglas. Uh, wink, wink. Because if you don't put that size on, uh, then it's going to be either Shane Douglas is down here on the card or Shane Douglas is out the back door. 
uh, it, 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 our industry needs a major overhaul. Uh, you know, most of us at the time that they were doing them, like, you know, I didn't speak for a lot of the guys uh, that had subsequently died from heart attacks and stuff, had very little clue as to the dangers of these drugs. To them, uh, Rick Rue was a perfect example. Extremely bright guy. And he could tell you, okay, here's how you want to do this cycle. For the first week, you're going to take three of these a day. And then on the fifth day, go down to two. Second week, this is what you're going to take. On the Wednesday of that cycle weeks, add this in. And, and you go to the ceiling, man, like he's a doctor prescribing drugs. But in the very next breath, he would say, of course, two cc's is better than one. And what's vicarious would mean four is better than two. And, you know, wrestlers had this, like, amazing way to separate these things. Like, okay, taken like this, they're safe, but it's still safe taking four times as much or five times as much. You know, just, just be careful while you're doing it. And, you know, so incredibly intelligent in one hand and then incredibly naive in the very next breath. Uh, I remember uh, Todd Champion, not long before he died, within a year, year and a half before he died, uh, showing me in the dressing room these bottles and bottles and bottles of Anadrol. Anadrol were 50 milligram footballs that you took, and they worked. They, they would make you huge. The problem is anything you ingest through here goes through your liver and kidneys and through your entire digestive system, and that caused a lot of problems. You know, kidney malfunction, shutting down liver, de uh, destruction of liver tissue, renal tissue. Uh, and you're, you were supposed to take like two of those a week, I think, two or three a week. He was taking five a day. And when he told me, I was like, well, don't, are you crazy, dude? Like, you can't do that. And, uh, well, a year, year and a half, two years later, he was dead of a heart attack at like 30 years old or 40 years old. So at some incredibly young age. So, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a big thing that needs cleaned up in our industry. And the steroid trial, uh, I think it showed the ineptness of the FBI and the DOJ and how they pursued that. Not assuming that, you know, again, the, the, the redhead stepchildren of, of, of entertainment, right? Those those guys are over there. And so they they under uh, prepared, I think, for Vince. I think they thought this guy's going to be a knock in the park. And Vince is a very intelligent guy in many ways <laughs> and not so much in other ways, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, when he went in there, you know, Vince was going in there. He's fighting for his life. And these guys are going in there and just punch the time clock for the day. And, you know, it, it was they, – they had to understand what that beast was before you can go and slay. It's like ten-headed ten -headed hydra. You can not too often three grow back, right? But this is how Vince operates with these layers of protection that gives him layers of plausible deniability. Of course Vince knew. There would be no way Zaharian or his nurses would be in the dressing room area and knew exactly what – you know, he may not know specifically what's in that particular bag, but he knows it's not – a sandwich, um, you know, so against the plausible deniability, it's a shame because many, many of my friends uh, that I should be able to have here right now with me and having fun with and have the beer with later on today have been in graves and have been in graves for a long time. When you were in the WWF, both 1991 and 1995, how did the drug testing work? Because uh, in 89, I think it was implemented, and I think when it all were 88, and, the, and probably Vince stood at the front and went, right, we're doing drug testing in six weeks. That's six weeks, everybody, we're going to be doing drug testing. And yeah. then if you do test positive, you're going to get a warning the first time. So, I mean, he gave them every out. But in 1991 and 95, how did they vary how do they differ well some of what you just said is correct other <clears throat> other parts of it aren't uh they would announce sometimes there was a test coming other times you'd walk in and there'd be a sign test today drug test today urine test yeah. today i mean i should say that this was in 89 i mean the the tied up a bit over the years obviously oh okay yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so <clears throat> how that would play out in real time as soon as we'd walk in and see that sign within 15 minutes tops, I would have just about every big name wrestler in that dressing room come to me with a Visine bottle and say, <laughs> here, piss for me, piss for me. And then they would take that Visine bottle and they'd put it up in their crotch, which would keep it body temperature, right? Because they check, check the temperature. And you know, you're standing right there watching me take the piss test. I just reach in there and squeeze the bottle in. That's all you need, good to go. Uh, I was typically the last guy taking the piss test most of those days. 
because I had pissed for literally everybody else in the dressing room. So that was one way. The other way is uh, it's all done in-house. They say independently and all of that. But uh, Vince McMahon is going to give you $50 million a year of work. You're going to give Vince McMahon what he wants back, or he'll give that $50 million bucks to somebody else. So uh, hilarious. Like when you'd hear of people getting popped for the drug test, it was underneath guys, enhancement guys, occasionally a mid-card guy here or there, not a single top guy in any of that time. You know, Alt Warrior always piss and clean, Hogan piss and clean, this guy piss and clean, Macho piss and clean, piss and clean, piss and clean. And I mean, you can take one look at them. And you, you know, if you've been around it, you certainly know what somebody on steroids looks like. Get the guy that works his ass off 25 hours a day. He doesn't look like that. Uh, he looks great, but he doesn't look like that. It gives a very unnatural, big, powerful, strong build, and depending on what you're taking. So the, the, I don't know. I've been full disclosure. It's been decades since I've taken drug tests in, in uh, WWF, WWE. My guess would be as I'm watching the product, the scan amounts that I do, the scan amount that I do watch it. I can tell you right now, I'd bet my life. This one is that one isn't this one is. Uh, and I'd be right probably 99% of the time. So it must still be going on. And now, you know, it's, it's, it's even harder because you have these anti-aging clinics, you know, where they give you human growth hormone or whatever. And as long as you're under the doctor's care, that, that suffices. So, you know, it's, it's much like, uh, Lance Armstrong, right? If you go back and you look at his at his uh, urgings that he was not doing anything, uh, and then we come to find out he was, well, technically he was using uh, EPO, erythropoietin, uh, which is a uh, derivative of red blood cells, allows your body to carry a lot more oxygen. And now you go back and listen. I just listened to one of, about like a month ago. His his discussion now, his conversation now about this topic. It went juxtaposed to what he had used to say. He wasn't wrong in what he used to, what he used to say. He was just lying because he knew he was using an enhancement drug. But the, the words themselves became a lot easier to finagle between the lines. Listen to what he's saying now. If you get a chance, Google up uh, Lance Armstrong's recent comments and, and look at it. And I would dare say the same exact things going on, not just in WWE, but the WWE, most likely AEW. Um, uh, for certain, still the NFL, Major League Baseball, and the rest of it. There's just there's a lot more ways to trick it. And the final point is hey, this just popped in mind as I was talking. You know, there was the Viazine bottle way, which was was one way. Another way would be put your own piss in there. But the morning of, you would take your fingers and dip them in Clorox, and then dip them in Clorox. Keep letting it dry. Keep letting it dry. And you take the test. You stick your fingers down in there, swirl it around, and give it to them to throw the test off. So, uh, and, and those are tricks like 30 years ago. I'm sure there's a lot more now and probably a lot better testing now. So uh, for any of the young talent out there uh, taking it, understand that these are very serious uh, 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 hormones. And it's like your car engine. You start putting odd hormones in your body that your body doesn't need, your body will shut down natural progression of that. And you could conceivably turn yourself diabetic, cause a slew of other problems. Uh, you know, the ankle bones connected to the shin bone. And when you start turning those screws in your engine, you could throw everything out of whack and almost make it impossible to get back to whatever normal is and, and being healthy. So please proceed cautiously.